family. Hey, how you doing? It is a video a day in May, video number 24, and I have come on to talk about the importance of parenting family. Listen, I've just come from out of the kitchen. I was in there making the kids some chicken enchiladas for dinner. And what steerheaded this conversation today is the fact that I was so angry when I first walked in the kitchen. The countertops were nasty. The kitchen was just a mess. There was water left on the on the countertop that dripped all into the microwave. Uh, the, there was water all over the floor. And mind you, my floors in the kitchen are wood. So when wood is wet, it gets damaged. It swells, it shrinks, and different things can happen. So um, I go in there, and it was a just complete mess. And at that point in time, you know, I just lost it, but I had to calm down for a minute. I really had to decompress, drop to a lesser charge, and tune into myself and ask myself a series of questions. And when I tell you <laughs> this spiritual awakening this getting real with yourself and this accountability ain't no joke, family. It is no joke. Every day you go through different highs and lows and different things for you to pay attention to and tune into and where you need to work at. And I knew that it was Isaiah's turn for the kitchen. It had been all week. And every morning... That is in my routine to go in there, go feed the dogs, let the dogs out, and make me a cup of coffee. And for the last few days, he has not been doing what he was supposed to be doing. Yesterday, I told him when he get out of school, don't do nothing. I need that room cleaned up. The room is a mess. It smells. Open up the window. Close the door. And when you get home, that is your job today. Last night... I'm outside. I had to finish vacuuming the pool. And so, I'm looking in the den, and he's playing Madden. Now here, mind you now, I didn't wait it. I waited until, you know, dusk dark because we've been pushing like 95 to 105 every day. So, it's easier and best for me to come outside and do the different things either before 2 o'clock in the afternoon or after 6 o'clock in the evening. That's just best time for me. So, you know, me and him, well, I had some choice words for, excuse me, for him. And so I was thinking about that this morning as well. Kids do what's been allowed for them to do. And we as parents, we have truly made our share of mistakes in rearing our children. And giving them any and everything that they ask for, it is not doing nothing but endorsing the bullshit and further makes them feel uh, different, go through different things in their adulthood. We're pushing them out in the world for other people to tend to what we should have reared in them from the very beginning. See, because a lot of times we lose sight of it. You know, a lot of times we have more kids than we can truly afford. So then therefore, that's taking our emotions, not only from what we need to teach and learn for ourselves, but we got to give the extensions to our children. And if you have an, a, a husband or a spouse or whatever, you got to spend your time with them. And then you have your domesticated duties as far as cooking and all that other things that you have to do. So we as women, we tend to lose our way. We tend to really lose our way. And then when you get to be my age, you're trying to figure out, okay, now it's my turn. But when it's your turn, guess what? You're so damaged because you put everybody first and you've been last. Now you don't know who you are. And now your kids are out in this world. And based upon what you've instilled with them, they're carrying that out into the world. It's true. And the thing is, Empathy and emotion, reg uh, emotion regulation is taught at an early 
age. Giving them everything that they ask for is not helping them. Going out and buying the Jordans and the this and this and this. And this. Man, at my kid's school, it's kids walking around with Gucci belts, Louis Vuitton backpacks and all this stuff. And these kids are smoking weed across the street from the school. Ditching every day. But their parents are lacing them up <coughs> with the best of stuff. Giving them cars. They're driving hell. If I go to McDonald's around between 11 and 12, oh my God, McDonald's, Burger King, all these places around here is full of kids. They got their cars, you know, there's a whole bunch of them in the car. You know, they're driving reckless out on the streets. But we as pussy-ass parents feel like we're giving them, oh, we gave them a car, or we, you know, put this and this on their feet, and, you know, they got the new iPhone. That's not helping them. That's not helping them at all because what it's doing is it's turning them to adult, adults that feel as though they are entitled. See, it's okay when kids throw tantrums and kids show the fuck out at a certain age. You're like, okay, you need your ass whooped. I mean, they kicking and screaming in stores and falling out on the ground and all that kind of stuff in public places. And we as adults, we be like, if you don't get your ass up, or we looking at the parent like, how are you allowing this three-year-old to show out like this right here, okay? But the same shit happens when they become adults. They're out showing out an explosive behavior. It's no longer cute. But they've been accustomed to getting their way. And they've been accustomed to showing the fuck out in public. Whereas they really, that's what they believe. You see what I'm saying? It's called, um, I can't think of the term that it's called because I'm, I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm just basing all my facts off of experiences, the relationships I've had with other people, and my own vision of life and the things that I see. But I'm telling you, family, it is so sad on what is going on around this motherfucker when people are walking around here with no empathy. They don't know how to regulate their emotions. They don't know how to stand accountable. Why? Because they were never taught that in, in, as, as children. And as adults, we believe that, you know, and as kids in the 70s, go outside and play. Y'all go outside and play. Go outside and play. Go outside and play. But you don't know who was outside playing with your children. You don't know who was outside molesting your children when you put everybody outside outside while the grown folks in the house playing bids, whiz, spades, drinking, smoking their weed, loud talking, playing Johnny Taylor, playing Got to Give It Up by, you know what I'm saying, motherfucking Marvin Gaye. When our parents was doing all that, they sent us outside. Yo, y'all go outside and play. You stayed outside till the street lights came on. Then some of those adults were brought up being raised by the streets. You know what I'm saying? So, see, you have to think about what you are instilling in these children. And you have to stand fully accountable. And when they're ready to talk about it, that's up to them. Stop telling them, okay, well, we need to have a talk. No, you need to ask them, you know what? Tell mama where I went wrong at. Please tell me where I went wrong at. And when you are able to talk to me, when you're able to talk and you're ready to share your truth, I am ready to listen. I'm not going to fuss fight. I'm going to be as humble as pie. And I'm just going to listen. And whatever their truth is and whatever they come out of their mouth with, you better be able to digest that. Because that is their truth. Now, I have put some notes here. Because I didn't want to miss anything. Okay? Um, uh, let me see. Where do I want to begin at? Okay, listen, touch, and openly talk to your children. Yes, you need to, and each and every one of your children are going to have different personalities. So the way in which you talk to your first child might not be the same way as you talk to the fourth one. Because they all have their own different personalities. They all perceive things probably a little bit differently. And they're probably looking at things a little bit differently. So you cannot, the way that you treat this one, you're going to treat the other ones the same way. Because it's not, it's not fair. You know, and stop telling them that their feelings don't matter. Quit telling them they lying about shit. Quit telling them what it is that they don't see or what they don't feel. Because those are their feelings. That is what they see, what they see, and that is their truth. But if we were never really given that empathy and compassion and emotional recognition at home as kids, 
It's hard to really give that as adults or instill that in our children as well. It's like a generational thing. You know, the way in which your parents taught you and treated you and told you that you were a Democrat or Republican or whatever the case, then you just pretty much run that the rest of your life. We're Democrats, we this, you get your ass whooped, this, 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 this. And that's not always the case. We need to get out of that realm and out of that generational box that because grandma and them did this, we're doing this. And that's not fair. It's not right. Okay. Now. Quit telling them how to feel. Yes, quit telling them, you know, what you know that they shit is not valid. Oh, you didn't have that kind of dream. Oh, I ain't never did that shit to you. Oh, you ain't never this, this, this. Oh, that ain't never happened. Quit lying on everybody. Oh, that man ain't never touched you, girl. Quit lying. My baby's a liar. You start telling your kids how much they're a liar, and you telling their kids that they ain't shit, their daddy ain't shit, their mama ain't shit, and all that kind of stuff later on in life. Their trust in people is going to be compromised. Please understand that. And they're going to believe the only way you can equate emotions is by gifts and tokens. If you love me, you would give me this. If you love me, you would do that. And when you don't do those very things that they ask of, because see, what you got to realize is these particular kids grow up to be kids in adult bodies with experience, now they have strength. You know what I mean? And now you got this beast that still have the mindset of a child. They cannot disconnect on certain things. Their emotions are compromised. And they still go back to their perpetrators, being their parents, for acceptance, recognition, validation, you know what I'm saying? They still go back to them later on. That's why when we were watching, uh, what was that, Atlanta Housewives, Kenya went back to her mom. She had already said that her mom had abandoned her as a kid and her mom, different things that her mom did and different things that her dad did a couple seasons back. We talked about that. We talked about it. I talked about it on the video. We've seen it on TV. This young lady truly needs some counseling. For real. Because now her subsequent relationships in her life now, you see how they're struggling. Because she was never really shown a really good foundation as a little girl. So now, look at what she's attracting into her personal space. Those very beasts. I, I could totally relate to her in that Matt situation. I could totally relate. I called upon one of those same very ones into my life. Okay? So... Then, therefore, you got to look at shit. Love and hip-hop. Look at Scrappy and look at his mom. Look at how he conducts his relationships with women. And look at what type of mama he had. Didn't she already say that she was running hookers and hoes and she was doing this, this, and this? And, you know, she was out and doing, you know, running women and tricks and whatever else she was doing, you know? And now look at his relationship with women. Look how he viewed them. They're a piece of meat. They're to be fucked. They're to be used. And once you get what you get out of them, they're useless. It's time to exchange them for somebody else. They really hold no value. He was never really taught that a man is supposed to provide, protect, and prepare. No, his mama showed him that a woman is supposed to go out in this world and do whatever unethical or whatever to feed her children and whatever and whatever, whatever, and bringing that bullshit to the house. Okay? So now look at him as a man. Look at what this done to him. He really wants to correct it, but guess what? He really doesn't know how. And when we saw Love and Hip Hop, what was this, last week or whatever, and Tammy was saying that he was crying on, on the phone with her at such such o'clock in the morning, because he really probably want to get to the bottom of this. But he doesn't know how. And apparently ain't nobody really told him about the beginning. But if he look at the relationship that he had with his mama. Apparently there's been some abuse. Some neglect. Some abandonment. Some not standing fully present. He done seen all kinds of shit that a woman would do. So his trust in a woman would be what? How can I really let my guard down? How can I really this, 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 and this? When hell, my mama done showed me that a woman would do this. 
you have to give these kids some very good ethical examples in their lives. Quit bringing motherfuckers to the house. This is where your kids dwell. This is their habitat. Everybody is not welcome in your home because you don't know what venom you're steering into your children. Your children are watching.